Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to the introduction to XGen for beginners series. This is the second video and in this video we are going to talk about XGen guides in Maya. All right, this scene is all set up. Let's start with um, inserting guides into our scene and add some hair to our character. Now with the scalp geometry selected, I can go into generate, create description, and that gives me create XGen description window, which is our first step or starting point, or I can go into XGen editor get the attribute editor version of that and then the first button is create new description and that gives me the same window you can import presets from a library from here as well so you can actually save your action existing work as a preset add it to your library and import it to your scene via this third button or if you have any saved collection or description but we are not going to cover any of those now to this create action description window we need to specify a name for our collection which is the big main container usually the object of interest the character you have is your collection you can have more than one collections if you have multiple characters in the scene you give each, you give each character a collection so i'm just going to name this character c-o-l-l for collection Try to be a little bit descriptive here and with description how many layers of hair you have per collection you may have three layers we may have eyebrows mustache and the hair for the head and that defines number of descriptions for this particular example we're just going to have one hair d e c s for description what kind of primitive are, are made by this description and this means basically what sort of hair you are going to use is that going to be a long hair which is usually a spline is that going to be fur very short hair pitch fuzz probably on character's face which is going to be groomable sometimes even grass and then we have very very specific scenarios we are not going to explore any of these put textures on a card have um archives geometry to distribute within our scene these are not scenarios that we're going to practice today so i'm just going to stay with spline i would like this to be randomly distributed across the surface one thing i don't want is that very uniform fake looking shape so definitely randomly and then for the purpose of this tutorial we are going to use guides um, not expression which falls into more intermediate to advanced category then we have using grooming tool and this has been grayed out because we did not pick groomable spline so with that and with the scalp selected we are going to create Maya prompts us that no preview is available as we are planning on using guides and we need to insert them to see the hair. Before I get into that, let me show you one big change that happens to our project directory. So if you look at our project directory, now we have this brand new XGen folder. Within that, Maya keeps all the collections so far we have only one collection within that collection we have one description and so far we haven't added any guides to our description so it's empty keep an eye on this folder you don't want to rename it or delete it and that's a reason that we actually set project because of integration purposes now action um, sees that folder if you bring files in and out from scenes if there's any Olympic file, if there's any assets you would like to exchange, that project directory holds it all together. So you won't be facing any broken links or unknown paths. So keep that in mind. Uh, another change that we have is this little guy in the outliner where we have a little bit of um, hierarchy going on and this is our action. So we have the main collection and that's a big X on one folder and then we have description multiple folders with an X on it. And then this is a platform and every guide that we create will be attached to this platform. Yes. 
I'm going to zoom in. In order to select or create rather guides, I'm going to use this button here, add or move guides. Same button is available on XGen shelf in here. So I'm going to click and then you can see I can uh, select and actually click and produce guides. I can click and that creates a guide for me. Immediately you guys can see that I have XG guide one, it's a unique name. And this is basically a proxy for our geometry. You can orient it, you can change the shape of it and that will change the shape of our hair. Now with one guide, you won't be able to see any preview. This is our preview button here. If I click on it, nothing shows up because you need more information. So as a matter of fact, I need more guides in here. I click one here and one here. Usually four is more than enough for Maya to have something to start with. But if I press preview, you can see I have few very, very ugly looking hair <laughs> on this character. But that's a good starting point. I can disable the preview and let's talk about these guides and see how they made up and how we can change the look of them because they just look very, very unrealistic. So first things first, you can obviously select the guide and press R and scale them. So you can select them one by one and scale them like so. You can also orient them. You can hold down or press E on your keyboard and somehow change the orientation. You may say, okay, that's good. So we can press W and move them, but that is not possible. You cannot move the guide this way. So there is a tool for moving guides and that is the same button as create guides. So if I select that and now hover over the guide and hold down control, I can actually move the guide instead of creating a guide from scratch. Very cool. Now, if I zoom in, select one of the guides, press F to zoom in. Let's see the component of this guide. If I right click on it, and go to guide control points, you can see it's very similar to NURBS surfaces. So I can select each CV and I can tweak the shape of the guide this way. I can do the same thing here, go to control guide and just reposition those points and get a slightly different looking hairstyle. But the problem that I will run into very soon is where I do not have enough or equal distribution. You can see the distance between these two CVs really close and the base CV is far from this here. So probably I wouldn't be able to edit this region. Now, there is a tool that can normalize the distance between each CV, which is actually quite useful. And that is if I select the guide is normalize. So every time you edit a, a guide, you can press normalize just to make sure that the distance between each CV is correct. But that is rather cumbersome. If we select each guide and try to edit it manually, that can be quite time consuming. And that's why we have a very, very useful tool, Sculpt Guide. I can click on that sculpt guide tool, hold down B to change the radius and sculpt the shape of the guide. I can actually select each guide, press G to repeat the last tool. And as you can see, I can efficiently move and edit the guide. If I don't select anything, I can actually move two together or I can just focus on one, change the look of it without individually selecting them. Now, if I go in here, you can see that there is a problem and that problem is lack of resolution.
The way that you control that is through rebuilding curve. So I can actually rebuild each curve to something like eight CVs or nine CVs and get a much smoother looking guide. So look how broken this is. If I go to rebuild and rebuild it to nine CVs, all of a sudden we get a, a really nice curvy looking shape. And now it allows me to really spend the time and fix the look of this groom. Now you got to be quite careful about this because right next to this sculpt guide tool is this convert primitive to polygons tool and that can actually cause Maya to crash if you click on it by accident because it tries its best to convert it guides into polygons. So I tend to middle mouse and move it right at the end. If I click on it right now, nothing is going to happen. It just turns our guides into geometry and puts it into a folder. But remember, we are going to deal with hundreds of thousands of hair and, and that may cause Maya to crash. So I'm just going to delete the folder to begin with and just middle mouse and move that button uh, right at the end. So I'm not going to select it by accident. Now, just so you know about this sculpt guide tool, you can lock the length, which is personally my preferred way of working because I don't want to overextend each guide by accident. You can hold down B and increase the size of this brush. So I don't want to overextend it, but if this is something that you want, you can actually unlock the length and you can actually extend it but remember that doesn't maintain the distance of each cvs you have to go and normalize your guide uh, after you use this you can change the um, color in here so the color indication is going to be slightly different i really don't mind this color it's quite um, easy to spot what's going on and then you can change the radius you can hold down b or you can use it adjusted right here through this slider Now, um, right now I'm not seeing anything, right? Um, because, well, if I scroll in the right hand side, I'm dealing with density of one. And when it says one, it doesn't mean that it creates one hair. It's just one hair per unit, world unit. So that can be quite misleading. Be careful that this does not represent number of hair. It's just the density per Maya unit. I'm going to uh, scroll down and bring in our representation of our hair as well. By the way, if you would like to hide the guide, you can click on this hide show guide. If you would like to hide the hair, you can go hide the hair and show the hair. And as Maya calls it primitives, I'm just going to go a little bit with add. I'm just going to improve the real state. Now, um, in here, you can change the length of the hair without affecting the guides. Not really my preferred way of working. I usually change the length of the guide using scale and only then update. Uh, with that, I know exactly how long the guide is and groom the hair based on that. So I tend not to really touch that length as much. Uh, with is something that I do change because I noticed that width of default value is just way too high. So something like 0 0.05 is a good starting point. I do taper the hair because if you look at the hair, there's a level of taper, maybe 0.85 would be a good value just to have that taper. Tube shade is something that I turn to turn off. It just adds a really fake specular highlight on the hair. It's not something that I'm too keen about. And these are all small bits and pieces that you just need to be mindful of. A lot goes into this and we are going to have a session to talk more about that. But that will give you a good starting point. I can turn off uh, shadow to just get rid of that artifact right here. And let's uh, it, let's in, insert more guides. I'm just going to put one guide here and one guide here and one guide here. Sometimes you want to create guides with the same shape. Let's say I'm going to 
go in here and click on sculpt and I'm going to start sculpting this little hair here. So I'm just going to spend the time and this is a very iterative process and sometimes it does take time. So let's say um, I'm actually quite happy with this. I'm going to click on insert guide, hold down control and move it here and select this little guy and move it there and use my sculpting tool and create something that I like. Let's say I'm just going to move this one up, hold down B to rate, change the radius, bring this one here and let's say these two guides are something that I like and I want to have almost similar shapes with for the surrounding guides. I can just right click on it and say copy guide shape, then go in here, right click, and then we go paste. And you can see we get almost the same shape. You can always go in here, orient it, and based on that, start sculpting your hair. Now, eventually you need to think about where would be the hairline, uh, where that is going to go, so on and so forth. But just for now, I think we are just getting to know the tools. I really don't mind if we have different shapes. I'm going to orient it this way. So um, now if I click, you can see now I'm starting to see something, right? So basically that's how you influence the shape of the hair. Obviously I can go ahead and increase and decrease the density if I want to. But again, we are going to talk more about um, guides and how to use guides but for now uh, that's a quick brief look at what guides are how to insert them on the hair geometry and in the next lesson we're gonna talk more about the flow and we're gonna talk about some of these tabs in our XGen attribute editor window so uh, a lot we need to cover stay tuned and see you guys in the next lesson.